This is an EPA super fun site on fire. The leachate has, is leaking now. We can see it coming out. They are trying to scoop up as much of this material as they possibly can. Uh, 10,000 gallons of this stuff has now leaked, leaking, and they're trying to clean this up as fast as they can. This is a crazy scene down here at the Westlake Landfill. Liam Mackett reporting for InfoWars.com. I know this is crazy, but we are back here out at the Westlake Landfill. I uh, wanted to go ahead and get some Geiger counter readings of our own, just for our own peace of mind. Um, really lucky to report that they're sticking around the high 40s, uh, not going up to that threshold, that radiation threat threshold that we're warned about. Now, what you witnessed last night was the leachate leak here. And of course, leachate uh, is liquid that moves throughout the landfill. And what it does is it's collecting uh, those undesirable particulates that are in the landfill. It's not really a big deal um, it, unless, of course, it leaks out. It, it can cause pollution and it smells really, really bad. The issue with this landfill is that this is now a radioactive uh, landfill. And so if you are collecting particulates of that radioactive material, and then of course the leachate tank suddenly leaks out 10,000 gallons of that fluid, that is not a good thing for this community. And that is why so many people are concerned that this is not a stable site. Um, now th what you're seeing over here, you're, the crews are still trying to clean it up. Uh, they're still out here today. We did see some people actually wearing masks there when they were messing around with the dirt and uh, pumping out the water and everything. Uh, could just be from the smell. Now, this right here is actually the Bridgeton landfill. This is where you're getting those reports of the underground fire, which is basically an exothermic chemical reaction. It's causing a lot of heat there with those chemicals. and. The Westlake landfill, it's all in the same compound, it's on the same uh, acreage, so that the same area, the Westlake landfill that contains the Manhattan Project waste is just over that hill. So the radioactive materials, there's no barrier in between this landfill and the other landfill, and that is what is the big problem. They're trying to find out what exactly was in that leachate, what exactly here, uh, what type of materials are coming out. Now, we reported yesterday that we were experiencing a burning sensation in our chest as well as our nose and throat. Uh, felt very stuffed up this morning when we woke up. And uh, some of the so what some of the residents have reported before and what they found uh, is uh, benzene which is obviously a known carcinogen. It can cause birth defects as well as cancer. Um, you've heard of that before, but that's uh, probably, you know, what we, that smell was. I, I don't know for sure, but um, if I had to take a guess, that's what residents have found that's been happening in the past. And if you think about it, we had to experience that for one day. It was terrible, but there are families out here that have to experience that every single day. Children that wait at the bus stop just down the street every single day. So the issue is, is that we need to get this site under control. It's a big deal. And this Manhattan Project waste is dumped all over the city. Now we're going to be putting out some more reports. We spoke with some of these families, uh, some of the families that have been experiencing the cancer clusters um, and what they're trying to do with the city to get this taken care of. So stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. There is growing fear in the sub suburban <laughs> St. Louis community over potential threat buried in the ground. A local landfill contains nuclear waste left over from the Cold War. The radioactive material was dumped there illegally in the 1970s. There's also a hot spot burning underground in a second landfill about four football fields away. Renita Nair is outside the Westlake landfill in Bridgetown, Missouri, where neighbors are fed up. Benita, good morning. Good morning. Well, one of the landfills that you mentioned, the one that contains the waste, was designated a Superfund site in 1990, meaning the federal government would fast track its cleanup. Now, 25 years later, the waste is still there and there is another potential threat. You can't 100% guarantee that we're okay. Hundreds of angry people demanded answers last night from federal officials. I'm scared. This is scary. We don't go outside. We don't open our windows. This is the source of their anger and frustration. Two landfills that abut one another in North St. Louis County. One houses two areas of illegally disposed nuclear residue named a Superfund cleanup site in 1990. The other landfill has an underground fire, a slow burn, which has been smoldering for five years. It's thought to be about a thousand feet from the radioactive material, but no one knows for sure what will happen if the fire comes into contact with the waste. 
I don't know why they ignored it for so long. I really don't. That's probably about accurate. Don Chapman lives less than two miles from the landfills and helps start a citizen activist group to educate her neighbors. What is the most frustrating thing for you as a resident? I cannot believe that somebody and anybody in their right mind would think that you can leave the world's oldest nuclear weapons waste sitting on the surface of a landfill for over 40 years and there not be a consequence to that. St. Louis's nuclear legacy dates to World War II, when uranium was processed here for America's first nuclear weapons. The sites where the leftover waste was stored have been clean, but some low-level radiation has moved into neighborhoods. Missouri's attorney general is suing the landfill's owner, Republic Services. He says the company mishandled the fire, and his experts say the underground burn could conceivably hit the material in three to six months. The Environmental Protection Agency and Republic strongly deny those reports, and the company has spent millions of dollars to contain the burn and control the odors. Talk Mark Haig is an acting regional administrator for the EPA. Portion. The testing we're doing now, or about to embark on with the additional samples we're collecting, I think will give the public additional information to uh, support what we've been saying. The EPA says they will decide whether to install a barrier between the two landfills by the end of the year. Don Chapman fears that solution will be too late. No barrier will be allowed to be put in by this community if you cannot 100% guarantee our safety without it. The underground fire is not the only concern. This past weekend, a grass fire erupted about 75 yards away from that radioactive waste. Gail, in addition to all of those problems, this area is also very close to an earthquake fault line. Oh boy. All right. Thank you, Vanita, very much. Ha <laughs> ha